Hello everybody, this is the Centralized Dave speaking and today I have a precious guest. Um, his name is Crypto with Rico. Hello, Rico. Hi man, thanks for having me. Well, thank you for coming. So uh, Rico is a fellow YouTuber and as it happens to be, he makes as well reviews. That's how I discovered him and his reviews, uh, the, the one I saw, the cell frame review, was a, of an excellent quality. So make sure to check his channel and subscribe to him because he does honest work, lots of good information, lots of good projects, and this is exactly the kind of content creator that will bring you lots of value. Appreciate the nice words, man. Uh, <laughs> is there anything I missed? Uh, no, no, not really. Uh, I'm the guy behind uh, Crypto with Rico. I make uh, videos mostly about projects. Lately, I've been doing some other videos as well, like uh, news videos. I educate the people. I never give out advice or I never do, um, let's say, um, a TA, you know, uh, analysis of, of, of all the numbers and stuff and where it might go. I just want to inform the public and give them the facts about a project so they can make uh, informed decisions on their own. So, uh, Even though you don't do the TA usually, <laughs> maybe we could do a little bit of the TA right now uh, <laughs> in this podcast. Yeah, well, I, I can do that. Sure, no problem. Uh, but I'll, I'll make it a little bit bigger than just uh, these numbers we see on screen because uh -huh. there's another... A uh, crypto mining company that filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, which is Core Scientific uh, Inc. Incorporated. And that's something we'll probably see happen more often. Uh, we see a couple of um, the, the more famous Twitter guys giving out TAs saying Bitcoin might go down to 14,500 or something like that. Personally, mm -hmm. I don't see it go up uh, very quickly in, let's say, a short period of time. The reason for that is because uh, firstly, we're at the end of this year. So that basically means that if you have, they got tax filings, you know? So you have to, in some countries, you have to pay tax over the trades that you make. And then at the end of the year, they can take their loss and they can write it off, sure. which prevents them from, uh, paying tax and they can just instantly buy back in. So a Bitcoin or whatever. Then it's the holiday season as well, <coughs> which means that people are taking out money to buy gifts and stuff for their kids or for their loved ones or their relatives. Um, and for the companies, usually what happens is at the end of every year or at the last quarter of every year, so let's say October, November, December, funds are drying out. So basically they've been running the company the entire year. They've been purchasing stuff, doing some investments. And then at the end of the year, their budget is, um, is uh, well, is empty. Mm -hmm. Then at the beginning of the next year or of every year, so let's say January, February, companies are deciding what their budget will be for the coming year. So they won't spend as much or take risky positions because of that, because they don't know how the year will be going. Obviously, we've got the war in Ukraine as well. That affects the entire market in Europe. Uh, all the European mm -hmm. countries are pitching in with military weapons that costs a lot of money and eventually that has to be paid back somehow. Um, so maybe uh, taxes will rise up, but then we've got gas prices, electricity, you know, living costs being more expensive as well. And so if we, if we take everything together, <coughs> I predict that we'll stay in the bear market. Um, I predict that we'll probably, well, in the short term, be somewhere around 14 and a half thousand. But will never happen. Uh, we'll never know what happened. You know, we can drop even further. However, in the long term, my vision is that Bitcoin is here to stay, crypto is here to stay. Um, but it's all about who's having um, the longest breath, who can hold out the longest. Uh, obviously, it's not financial advice. Everybody has to make decisions on their own. But that's my personal uh, view on the market right now. What about the uh, S&P 500? Would like to comment on that. Do you pay attention to the S&P 500 as well? It used to be correlated very heavily, um, <clears throat> but right now it's uh, it probably still is a little bit uh, because you see that when that goes down, crypto goes down, vice versa. But it all has to it all has to do with the funds that are being moved around, you know. So. If people don't invest in the regular markets, then it won't make sense for them to invest into crypto markets and vice versa. Um, 
I've read that it's a fun fact. Uh, I've read that criminals, for instance, mm -hmm. they used to say that they would go into Bitcoin and into uh, privacy coins like Beam, uh, Monero, Zcash um, to loan the money or to, you know, to make sure mm -hmm. that sanctioned people can still access their money. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry, but now you see a shift towards the old school methods of like gold, where they buy some gold, they get it melted somewhere else put a new stamp on it so that it looks legit. They move it around again. Um, and the same, same goes for this. So like I said, it doesn't make sense if people don't invest into the S&P 500 companies uh, for them to invest in the Bitcoin and vice versa. Also, um, one of the notes that I made is we've got the, the prices going up of living costs, gas, like I said in a minute ago. But consumer U.S. consumer confidence rebounds, but it's still not sure uh, it will be the end of the recession because many other areas like housing markets, for instance, are doing bad. And for me personally, <clears throat> we've got some basic needs. We need to eat. We need to drink. We need a roof over our head. Yeah, if those yeah. sectors aren't performing well or they show a decline, uh, that means that people are sitting on their money. And when people are sitting on their money, that means it won't. It, it doesn't get invested, which prevents growth in companies and stuff. You said that the uh, you also think it's correlated, but I feel that I might see it correlate a little bit more. Um, when you look or when I look at the history of the crypto and uh, well, S&P 500 um, after the 2013 bubble, that Bitcoin went over thousand dollars for the first time, then it was consolidating for quite some time, actually. It took whole 2014 and then even like uh, 2015, it actually like took like two years until it started, like the prices started really recovering. And it was only at the very end of 2016 that Bitcoin broke $1,000 again. And the reason why, for instance, I think this is this how this took so long back then was that the stocks the s p 500 were in the consolidation as well in 2014 and 2015 s p 500 were only going sideways so i do think it has always been extremely correlated and i think that unless the s p 500 starts breaking all-time high or at least comes back to the all-time high then I think that there cannot be another uh, like uh, sustained crypto bull run until that time. Yeah, but the whole the whole the whole thing is that, in my opinion, the situation is completely different than what it was because um, crypto has more institutional money right now, so there are uh, <clears throat> higher interest of companies that if they lose a lot of money they go bankrupt. They don't want that, so that's one thing. We've got um, uh, more retail than before. Obviously, not as much, but we've got more retail than before. But if we look at, uh, let's say, the housing market and the rates from that, if you pay 1% on your mortgage, that's now 4%. That, need, that means that you need to pay four times as much. So if mm -hmm. your mortgage was 1,000, you now have to pay 4,000. I'm not taking into account um, uh, the down payments that you make to decrease your uh, loan and stuff. Just, just the interest. You need yeah. four times as much, but nobody is earning four times as much in the same time span as that the interest went up. With that in mind, together with the institutions, together with the fact that a lot of companies went bankrupt in the crypto space, look at FTX and, and, and the entire ripple effect that that has caused i mean blockfi voyager 3ac um uh, and more to follow i'm pretty sure uh, i'm pretty sure about that that those like like tell me a market in which something major or so much happens that doesn't go bankrupt when it does if, if, imagine so many bad news on a bank people would start running for the money and it will collapse and crypto is here st still here to stay so i believe like i said it will be here to stay but there are 
the the reason why I think it won't correlate as much right now is because the situation now is completely different than it was back then when it was still correlating as much and, and following uh, one another after another. Are you suggesting that there is some kind of decoupling process happening of cryptocurrencies from the stocks? Uh, yeah, I, I do because uh, in general, obviously, like I said, if, if people don't invest into uh, stocks, they probably won't invest into Bitcoin, vice versa. Uh, you invest Both or you are invest. Risk, risk on assets, right? Both are risk. <laughs> exactly. However, <clears throat> this decoupling process even correlates with what I feel or believe in, but I'm not sure that the coupling is happening at the very moment, or maybe it is, but maybe it's slow process. But I also do feel, believe even, that a crypto should decouple because it was designed as a literal alternative, alternative to the finance system and alternative to the well stocks well just what logic tells me at some point this heavy correlation that has always been there in my opinion so far always has been there heavy correlation might cease at some point but whether it's happening at the very moment maybe it's a slow process that is happening at the very moment and maybe the next year we will see that more clear is that what you're suggesting yeah, I, th I think in the future it will be a little bit different. Um, uh, regulation has to come as well. Mm -hmm. So that will have a huge impact. So, yeah, I think it will, uh, the lines will be definitely different from, from the previous time. Well, uh, as for my last question, uh, this is an interesting question uh, overall. Um, so, what's your take on the Bitcoin and uh, versus the everything else, uh, the altcoins? Where do you stand on <laughs> right now? My personal strategy. So it's not, I can't stress this enough. It's not financial advice, but my personal strategy is to play it more safe. Mm -hmm. And my life changed, my private life changed, I got, you know, and, and that made me change my risk appetite as well. Very you can nice. go risky with altcoins, um, invest into meme coins, hope for that 100 X, um, invest into nfts hope for it to blow up but most of them have been proven to be um a horse manure you know so personally i'm looking for the 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 bigger uh tokens or coins like bitcoin ethereum um hopefully for my own sake solana will go back up again okay um, uh, binance coin is is something that um i'm still very interested in Mm -hmm. because i'm also i'm keeping a very keen a very close eye to it because i'm also waiting to see what will happen to binance itself due to all the things that have happened between them and fdx and uh, uh, the proof of reserves and, and and stuff like that so i'm definitely keeping my eye on that and and i can't stress this enough i made a video about this as well uh not your keys not your crypto so that's another yep thing that 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 i um I told myself i would do more get my crypto off exchanges keep it on a cold storage or something like that because three days before blockfi went bankrupt i took my money away if i didn't wow you had money yeah, on blockfi that, yeah i had money on blockfi um wow. uh, for an interest rate of eight and a half percent i believe I had it there for about one and a half years already. Everything was going fine. But then when I saw the news articles coming in, I was like, I need to get my money out of there, which I did. And then three days later, yeah, three days later, everything got frozen. And so I want to minimize my risk and maximize my profits in, uh, in, the, in the next bull run or in the next few years for that matter, e even if it won't be a, a full on bull run as it has been before, people need to realize even if you only have a four times or a five times, that's still mm -hmm. incredibly good if you compare it to regular markets. Tell me a stock that you can invest in right now that will do, let's say, a 5x in a month or in two months. That's practically impossible. And in crypto, it is impossible. or it was possible. I can't believe that, and I was part of it as well, but I want to prevent myself from having that gold fever 
you know, from the gold rush, the fever during the next bull run and to make sure I play it more safe, take profits more, you know, stuff like that. Well, <clears throat> what about the philosophical part of the question, Bitcoin versus altcoin? Like, what is your take on what's going to stay here five years from now? And or what's going, what can the valuation of the Bitcoin can be in five, 10 years? Do you believe in a future of Bitcoin that way? Or do you think the altcoins have the bigger future here long term? Hmm, good question. <clears throat> Even though there are only there will only be 21 million Bitcoin, which would mean if you have one, it will probably be worth 1 million. A lot of them are locked up <coughs> or can't be used or are confiscated by the FBI or, you know, so they can't the be Chinese, traded anymore. Chinese, yeah, have a, the Chinese authority has a massive stash of Bitcoin. Yeah, and with the with the altcoins, the problem with that is that you can uh, invest into altcoins. But uh, same goes for Bitcoin. But I believe that the chance that Bitcoin will stay alive is higher than any regular altcoin there is. Anything can happen. If if Crypto.com goes goes bankrupt, bye bye zero, bye bye VVS, bye bye everything that's in that ecosystem. You know. Um, mm -hmm. FTX went bankrupt. A lot of value from Solana got wiped. Um, for instance, I bought Solana 212. So you can imagine how I feel oh right now. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So um, Luna, for instance, I was I was I was looking to put some money onto Anchor, but I was too lazy to do it because I had to go through all kinds of hoops. <coughs> One week later, poof, Luna was gone. I mean, and, and so was Anchor and people lost all that money and, and allegedly some people killed themselves as well over it because they lost lost their life savings and stuff. And that if you invest into altcoins and that brings me back to my story, uh, but to answer your question philosophically, I think that Bitcoin has a higher chance of survival than mm -hmm. any other altcoin there is simply because Bitcoin was the first and it was the thing that it started with. So you believe that the first mover's advantage and the game theory associated with it will carry on? In this case, yeah. Because okay. in regular business, what happens uh, uh, sometimes, not always, but sometimes, is that someone invents something. So they pave the way. They, they, they um, I don't know the English word for it, but they patent it, you know, trademark it, stuff mm -hmm. like that. But then someone else comes and does it better and they yeah. succeed. Mm -hmm. If you it's... look at, I forgot the title of the name, but there's a movie on uh, Netflix right now, which is about McDonald's. Two guys were having a hamburger joint, were successful, and then someone else came and expanded the idea, franchised it first, and then took it over completely, you know? Mm -hmm. That happens a lot as well, but for Bitcoin, like Ethereum as well, you've got you've got so many Ethereum solutions right now, mm -hmm. but Ethereum is still here. Ethereum is paying, you know, is, is still developing and stuff like that. So in crypto, I do believe that first mover advantage um, uh, helps. Final thing I want to say about it, you know, those lists, those top 2000 lists, those music lists and stuff, and every, or mm -hmm. like those Christmas uh, list songs on the radio. Like in every Spotify. single year, yeah, every single year, the same three songs are in the top three. That's because people tend to vote on them because they have the thought that, well, they, they'll stay in the top three as well. And then if I have to pick one, I'll pick the most popular one, you know, because I want to be part of it. I want to say that I voted for the most successful one. This is what I, this is why I watch Home Alone every Christmas, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> also, the reason why I'm asking you these questions about the Bitcoin and the altcoins is that I know you have a very high understanding of lots of altcoin projects out there. I don't know how many reviews you have done, but at least the one that I saw of the cell frame was a very high, extremely high quality. And you will learn a lot about the project. And uh, 
Cellframe is a platform that eventually would like to compete with Ethereum. But also, I also think you agree, you will agree that some of the projects will eventually also come up with something new in which they will be first mover again. Just like Ethereum used to came, come with something new back then. And so there might be some new first movers, right? In some other fields. You're right, except for one thing. If they build on existing change like Polkadot, Ethereum, um, yeah, whatever, yeah, Solana, yeah. you know, and they go bust, then all those projects will go alongside with them. Yes, agreed. So it's but, like uh, a chain reaction, you know? And that's why I believe in layer ones. And that's why I have been working on reviews for layer ones mainly. Uh, well, our time is running out. I would like to chat even more, but uh, uh, we have to come. We have to wrap this up. Thanks a lot, man. It was a very good talk with you. And uh, thank you for having me, man. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure you're gonna, we're we're all gonna have better uh, better 2023 than we had 2022. <laughs> I definitely hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me, man. <laughs>